hi everyone welcome to this video on multi class classification so in this video and in the coming videos we are going to work on one interesting project which is image classification right and remember we have studied about spm logistic regression knife based classifier and so many other classifiers but specifically talking about some of the classifiers like spm and logistic we saw that these classifiers are binary classifiers right which basically means uh, they give you only uh, two types of outputs right so in case of logistic regression we saw that uh, the output belongs to two classes one class is labeled as zero the other class is labeled as one and in case of svm we designed our loss function our algorithm in such a manner that it can predict only the negative class and the positive class again it is a example of binary classification like shown here right but in many real life examples you will encounter that you need to classify your data into more classes for example in this uh, project that we are going to build we have four classes one is your dog one is your cat one is your horse and the fourth class is your human being right so we need to uh, classify something like this that we have a zero class one class two class three class or we have a cat dog or human right so uh, assume that your data looks something like this and you want to do multi class classification so multi class basically means your output can have multi multiple classes so this is a multi multi class output right and this is your binary output right so this is also your binary output so we want to extend these classifiers logistic spm and any other binary classifier to to a multi class case right so this can be done using two techniques the first is called one versus one technique and the second is called one versus rest technique right so uh, what does this technique says this technique basically one versus one is that if you have n number of classes right if you have n classes then you are going to train nc2 classifiers you are going to train nc2 classifiers and for example if you have uh, five classes right if you have uh, data in five classes then you are going to take 5c2 which is 5 into 4 by 2 you will make 10 classifiers each will learn its own set of weights or parameters right and each for every pair of class right for every pair of uh, data right for example if you have a data set like this then to the first classifier you will make 3c2 classifiers which which are three classifiers so the first classifier will distinguish between these two classes whether the point is yellow or it is blue right the next classifier might distinguish between these two classes whether it is yellow or it is green right and the third classifier might distinguish between these two classes whether it is green or it is blue right so something like this you are going to build right for every pair of classes so we have uh, yellow and blue one pair yellow and green another pair and blue and green another pair right so this uh, green is two times blue is occurring two times and yellow is also occurring two times right so what we are going to do we are going to take a majority vote right for example the out of these th th three classifiers you are getting that your uh, out of three classifiers two classifiers are going to say that this given point is yellow right if if you get a majority then you make the prediction right so uh, prediction happens according to the majority vote right majority vote from nc2 classifiers right and this is going to take quadratic time right so this is going to uh, take order of n square time right right so this type of approach is uh, particularly useful if 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 you have a large data set and which cannot fit in, f into the memory right so if you have a very large data set and you cannot fit entire data set into the memory then you can use this one versus one scheme right okay and the other scheme is called one versus rest right 
so in this scheme you are going to treat uh, a single class and all other training points will go to the negative class so you are, you are going to label this class as 1 and if you, you are going to label this class as minus 1 if you are using SPM while training right then this class will be minus 1 this would be 1 right so you are going to uh, take subsets of your data then this class is going to be positive class and this class is going to be your negative class or the zero class right so you are going to do one versus rest kind of a thing where the points belonging to one class will form one group and points belonging to all other classes will form another bigger group right so this type of approach will need more memory right and but it will need only n classifiers right and you will have one classifier for each class right so this class will uh, this classifier will tell you whether the point is yellow or not right so each classifier will give you a decision of the type yes or no whether this uh, point x uh, let's say x belongs to class c dash or not right some some data point x i it belongs to class c dash or not and you can train these n classifiers in parallel right you can train them parallelly right so it is uh, it this approach will take less time right and it, it is going to be order of n because you are training all the n classifiers parallelly and on a data set of size order of n right and this is also very common and you can uh, this is you also used by default in scikit-learn library, right? So this is a default choice for scikit-learn library, right? So if you go to the documentation of uh, Logistic regression or you will see that it, it, it has a parameter called OVR decision uh, function is 1 versus rest or OVO which is 1 versus 1, right? So you can look up these in the sklearn documentation, right? for the logistic or the SPM classifier. So by default, it uses a one versus rest kind of a scheme, right? Okay, so in, I hope this idea of uh, classification using one versus one and one versus rest is clear. And the, why we have uh, used this idea is because we want to extend our uh, classifier to give multiple classes in the output right so if you use these two schemes or either one of those schemes you can easily extend your binary classifier to solve a multi-class problem and in the next video we are going to start with how to build your uh, image classifier using svm and we are going to build it from total scratch right so thanks guys for watching i will see you in the next video